Hello, hi, how are you today? In this video, I wanna to talk to you about some of the events that are happening that have a lot of people very fearful, frankly. Um, we're talking about the bank collapse. We're talking about pretty much the triple thing. We've got banks, we've got real estate starting to drop, and we've got tech companies sort of also, they've been laying off people. So. I want to just talk about this. This has happened before. In fact, this has happened in several cycles. Um, these are part of economic cycles that have to do with expansion and contraction. But there's another thing at work here and two things I'll really say. One is um, gambler mentality, which puts sometimes other people's stuff at risk. Okay, we are up against mentalities ever since the pandemic because the pandemic, like it or not, popped a lot of stuff out of people, hatred, fears, financial fears, um, illness fears, fears of your own mortality, you name it. Fear is popping out, hatred is popping out, that which has hurt us and we hate it, popping out. And I want to say a few things, and I'm going to say this as an American, because for, you know, news trickles over to other places and then the fear mongering starts number one stop the fear mongering and stop being part of the problem and start being part of the solution if you're ascending you're connecting with your own higher self who does want to look out for you and will have you know the way for you to get through this whether it's reinventing reallocating your money or even making money money can be made when things fall apart uh, money can be made when there's tragedies. That's not saying that you're a blood-sucking leech. What that means is that someone's got to come in and repair it. My ex-husband and I owned an auto body shop, and we fixed car accidents. That was our primary bread and butter. People would have an accident. I'm very sorry people had accidents, but accidents happen, and we would fix them. We would fix 30 to 40 cars a month. And we weren't the only ones. We were getting people back on the road. And so this is what I want to say to you. This is how I look at it. How can we get you back on the road? How can we get this, you know, these failures that start to leak? They should be sniffed out to begin with. Now, within some of those uh, avenues of the economy, there are a, a system of checks and balances. Part of the issue is when you raise rates, you have large companies that are floating their payroll and they were paying 2%. Now they're paying 10% or more. And how much float is that to rely on sales to come in? Okay. They raise the prices, but then people start tightening their belts and they're not buying. So you mean that means you got to let go of some people. Well, that's the layoffs. Okay. So you have big tech layoffs, big tech should have knuckled down during the pandemic and not hired at exorbitant hiring fees and salaries. That was an unrealistic thing to think that was sustainable. But it seemed very necessary. How are we going to staff up the whole world's going online? Well, it actually didn't. And people went back to, you know, doing other things. Part of the population died. Part of the population retired. So the whole country is understaffed. So you have this bank issue. The bank issue is really several houses of cards that were waiting to fail that they tried to raise money to shore it up and they were stopped and it didn't happen. And so hence you have that. Now the media hypes this up as like a crash. You picture something falling through the floor. You know, there's no money, like their safe just fell through the floor. They're required to keep a certain amount of actual cash on hand to match. It's a percentage of whatever is deposited. There's also insurance. Now, here's the kicker. If you are an American and you have money in a bank, if your bank is not FDIC insured, you need to look at your bank and you might want to move your money to a bank that is FDIC insured. If you, the FDIC insurance will cover you under $250,000. So if your deposit adds up to less than $250, 
You're covered by insurance. That is insurance that banks pay so they can stay in business in case of some type of failure. Okay. Bank is only good as the people running it. And some people do run companies into the ground. Some people gamble. Some people squander the money. And this is why, you know, when we look at all this stuff in terms of ascension, what are these mentalities that are actually root chakra problems? Gambling, risk taking, loyalties, money, money and sex, money and, uh, you know, sex, drugs, and rock and roll. People don't want to believe it, you know? And then people want to believe that, you know, this system is dark. It's not. It's full of people that are average people, everyday people that are probably not activated like you are. If you utilize the proper connections that you have with your higher self through ascending and twin flame reconnection, which I do, and also your brand new light body you start getting the signals so that should something happen you start feeling and you feel your own guidance and you also feel yourself and some people feel like hey i didn't want to be at that job anyway this is a blessing in disguise i want to open a business there are many many businesses ready to be opened right here in my town there's a lovely euros restaurant it was very successful none of the grandkids wanted to take it over the owner just folded up his tents. There it sits. It's been sitting for a year. Someone who's really sharp and able could come along and buy that and turn it into a successful business again. But sitting and waiting. We're seeing this all over the country. We're seeing empty real estate, shuttered stores, and we're seeing other things trying to start up. There are a lot of startups that had their money in some of these banks because it was convenient. And it's always an important thing. It is one of the axioms of in personal investing, investing, which is to diversify. That means, you know, you're not putting all your eggs in one basket. You have a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit there. Another thing is some companies produce actually nothing. Okay, they're an idea, but nobody's buying. That means when it gets to the consumer level or business to business, Nobody's buying. Someone has to actually buy the product for it to be viable. Otherwise, it goes upside down. They owe money and, you know, everything plummets and they can't make their payroll. They can't pay their vendors. And this is why I'm saying I've been through it. Yes, I was a victim of the 2007-2008 real estate bubble where real estate property, frankly, when you overinflate a property, you're going to expect some course correction and the buyer beware. If you are buying a piece of real estate, you got to know what the average is in the market. Don't overpay. Don't go into a buying panic and don't go into a panic when you sell. Either hold the real estate because you got to wait for that other course correction. Okay. You can't always time these things because sometimes these things turn on a dime and they flip around and they happen so quickly that a lot of people have regrets. A lot of people start wondering, why did I do that? You have to have the means, and this is part of the due diligence of making sure that it is a viable investment. In other words, do you have an emergency fund? Do you have the things that you actually need should something happen? And you can't go into it willy-nilly. And this is one of the things that I also learned is that people who tend to be um, the best wealthy people, they're diversified. They get up every day. They tend to their business. They are vigilant about their stuff. They are not given to chicken little panic attacks that like the sky is falling. They're aware of opportunities they stay relatively sober. They don't get messed up on drugs and alcohol, really. You can see successful people. But the people who really mind their own store, they're not doing that, okay? The people who uh, go about it quietly, you'd be surprised what their portfolios have. And this happens all over. And it's not just, you know, one segment of people. So people can feel taken advantage of because... Maybe they did not have those opportunities, but I want to tell you a quote that I saw. The money can be made in the downfall of an empire as much as it can be made in the building up of an empire. What can your higher self inspire you with?
How can I help you connect to your higher self, really connect your light body so that you can weather these things and that you come out ahead and that you can actually do more with less because your light body isn't holding old illnesses, old resentments, old grudges, old emotions. You can feel and see and think and dream clearly about what are your next steps, about how would you make your passion your paycheck. I've led several classes on that and it's not just about being woke and it's not just about railing against the system. It's about making a better system. It is about making a better life, a better world, a better environment, and better stuff for the next generations. So if you're someone who has children also, and you are concerned about, you know, how are they seeing this and how are they viewing it? You have to teach your kids how to be sensible. You start having the conversations about money. Money is the number one killer of relationships. It's the number one killer of uh, particularly romantic relationships. I've seen it for years. I've seen it for years and years and years. You think infidelity is, it's not. It's financial infidelity and emotional infidelity. And that is caused by the wrong, uh, the wrong uh, let's say, priorities in a person's life. Okay, if you're with the wrong person, it really shows up. If you're not liking the way your financial advisors are performing, seek elsewhere and do your homework. If you're, if you're questioning your bank, don't listen to the panic that's out there saying, pull all your money out of the bank. That's what further helps all this collapse. Do you want everything to collapse or do you want to keep a cool head about it? Check if your bank is FDIC insured. Call them or call the, you know, call the FDIC themselves. Ask if you have less than $250,000, you're good. If your money is liquid, in other words, is it in savings? Is it in money market? Is it in checking? You can take it out. If it's locked in a CD, you can take it out, but there will be a penalty for that. It's usually 10% on $1,000. That might be, you know, I don't know what's 10%. Somewhere between 10 to 100, depending on what the terms are of that. If you are paying a mortgage to a bank, okay, that doesn't necessarily mean that bank is going to fall apart. They want the money. Don't stop making your mortgage payments. I've had people on this journey erroneously feel like they got guidance. And then it's not guidance. It's fears that they stop paying. Please do not stop paying your obligations. If you're having an issue, call them and negotiate. They would rather negotiate with you than to not receive anything. Okay. If you are paying for the mortgage, chances are your mortgage is already sold to another servicer and it just has that bank's name on it because these get pooled and securitized to Wall Street and that's who you're really paying. And who invests in that are sometimes pensions. They're like teachers' pensions. They are police pensions. They're union pensions. That's who's getting the across the board guaranteed 5% based on the mortgage you're paying. In many ways, this is just like that film, It's a Wonderful Life, where you're seeing a real life bank run here. And we have to keep a cool head and just use what you need. Use what you need. If you need further help, because I'm here to help you do this at an ascended level, to get your needs met, to have more than your necessities, to really get in the flow, please let me know and please reach out. And please take my video in the sense that it is intended, which is to encourage you to please don't be afraid. Please know that you're loved. Please know that there are solutions and many people will be helped. And hey, if this is what it takes to, you know, see what's really happening behind, you know, their it always happens. You know, th that's why the system of checks and balances, you don't get that with crypto. Okay. No government in the world is going to step in and help people with crypto on a currency that they don't regulate. Okay. And yet the issue is being forced here. So how do we do this? We wish for it. We wish that if people want to speculate in crypto, that they don't get hurt and that maybe it becomes a regulated thing, even though people want to take it off the grid. Guess what? They go crying to, you know, 
Uncle Sam to bail them out, okay? Who ultimately pays for these bailouts, it's not your taxes this year. It's over the next 40 years, okay? Everything you pay in. So the more we're able to nip in the bud, the better this is going to be. The less you're able to panic, the better you're going to feel. The more you're able to reinvent, you're going to know what your next moves are and where you want to go. So I hope this video helps you because that is my intention. I have weathered several of these things that they've called the white collar recession, the blue collar recession, you know, um, getting away from portable wealth, actually able to create generational wealth. Like these are new concepts for people. It's very new for women. We just got the vote a hundred years ago. Just imagine now, you know, having the intelligence and the, you know, the, the actual initiatives to do stuff and you can't do anything. Your hands are tied. Okay. This is our get up and go day, ladies. So would you like to panic or would you like to do it differently this time? I vote for let's do it differently. Thanks so much. Have a good day. Reach out with questions and any help that you need. Okay. Thank you. Bye.